The One Piece live action. Live action One Piece. One Piece live action. One Piece live action? The One Piece live action series. I should watch this. Live actions, a form of cinematography where manga or anime is brought to life. To put it simply, this is the anime, this is live action. And live actions are known to be very, very bad. After the monstrosity that was Cowboy Bebop live action, in how every big anime YouTuber was hyping it only for it to be this hilarious piece of garbage, many anime fans, me included, lost hope in any upcoming live action no matter how hype it would get. Just show me the whole episode next time, I want to see everything. No, you don't. But what most fans don't realize is that there are actually three types of live actions. The bad, the good, and the ugly. And live actions that belong to the good are actually really popular, but only a few know that they are in fact live actions, because most of them don't even have the word live action associated to them. So recently, when the new One Piece live action was released, I decided to give it a try and see which category does it belong to. And after watching it, I can undoubtedly say that it was bad, good. Oh, likely. It's not as obvious as it sounds, okay? First, I need to explain to you these three types, starting with... I think there are two problems with Japanese live actions. The first one, when you transform a manga or anime into real life, you have to drastically change the way things are portrayed. And if you try to copy the anime as it is, it's just gonna look stupid. And that's exactly what Japan does. They copy the anime and manga one to one, which results in scenes like this. Scenes that looks just flat and unnatural. The second problem is trying to make real actors act like anime characters. They can't. Unless they have Jim Carrey for every damn character. It's just impossible to translate those facial expressions, those weird goofy movements we see in anime. In my opinion, among those hundreds of garbage live actions, there are only three exceptional good Japanese live actions. Rorono Kinshin, Blade of the Immortal, and The Fable. That's it. Everything else? Trash. And I think the reason they managed to make these three shows good is just because their stories are pretty grounded and close to reality. I think that's made them easy to adapt. So, conclusion? Japanese live actions are are bad because they don't make changes to the source material. They control C, control V, the same scenes in the same camera angles hoping that they get a good live action. They won't, because they are copying the source material, not translating it into reality. On the other hand, we have Hollywood making drastic changes to the source material, and that's why they are... In the decades since Japanese animation broke through to the mainstream of Western pop culture, Hollywood has been eager to mine it for precious content. It's not hard to say why. Anime has offered us some of the most fascinating, creatively striking, and challenging entertainments of the past 50 years. And Hollywood actually delivered when it came to adapting this medium. Multiple amazing live actions movies were made by Hollywood. The most noticeable ones, Alita, produced by James Cameron, the maker of Avatar, Edge of Tomorrow, starring Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt, Speed Racer, by the same directors of The Matrix, Old Boy, City Hunter, Ghost in the Shell, Shaolin Soccer, and these are only the ones that fell into my radar. And of course there are some bad apples even under the Hollywood logo. Introducing Dragon Ball Evolution. That movie was so bad that the screenwriter wrote an apology letter to the fans. That's just how bad it was. But 90% of Hollywood live actions are very good. Me 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 but I wrote it not was bad. Me 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 Hollywood is raining anime. You just don't love this little shit today, aren't you? Well, not every American show is considered Hollywood. This note was made specifically by Netflix. So actually, it's part of the... So far, not a single Netflix live action ever worked. They are all garbage. This Note the anime is one of the best works ever made. This Note the live action is one of the most confusing works ever made. And the reasoning most of time is either they changed the story to the worst so that it fits into a movie or a series, or the director was just ass. Their most recent fart was the Cowboy Bebop live action, which feels more like someone was told about Cowboy Bebop and without watching it decided to remake it. They focused so much on making the anime into real life that they forgot to make a good movie or series. And the reason why Netflix is so into it adapting anime into live actions is not because of a noble cause, like trying to bring those creative and amazing stories into real life. The real reason is pretty simple. Money. There is a lot of money in live actions, because there is already an existent huge fandom of those anime, thing that will give them a pre-boost of viewership aside from the people who didn't actually watch the anime and are discovering it for the first time. Netflix don't care about reaching a new mainstream audience, aside from the anime fans who are watching it just to see how their favorite moment would look like in real life. They spend just enough money to make the live action that the fans of the source material would be interested in. That's already a win to them, and they are not ashamed to keep profiting from the same source. I mean, they are already 
already working on another Death Note live action, the Audacity. But as I gave an exception for every category, I think there is also an exception with Netflix, and that is Alice in Bordenland. It did stay true to the manga while improving on it with a great cinematic vision. So, in conclusion, which category One Piece live action belongs to? Obviously, the ugly. But is this gonna be an exception like Alice in Borderland, or is this just another Cowboy Bebop situation? Well, at first I thought it's gonna be the latter, but then I read an article that says The budget for this 8 episode series is 144 million. Do you have any idea how crazy that number is? For reference, Game of Thrones is one of the most expensive series to exist, with the first season estimated at 50 million dollars. One Piece have a bigger budget than Game of Thrones. So after this was announced, people started having hope. The hype was real. By far the most hyped live action actually. And that's only natural. One Piece is the most popular manga ever. Why? It's like saying, why is the Bible so popular? And what got me even more hyped for this are Oda's letters to the fans. In the first one he mentioned, Netflix promised we won't launch it until I'm satisfied. And in the second letter he said, even after the shoot was over, there were numerous scenes the production agreed to reshoot because I felt they weren't good enough to put out into the world. And finally, in the third letter he says, there were no compromises on this show. And like every human on this planet, I have huge respect for Oda Sensei. He's kinda like a god. So if Oda says it's gonna be good, then it's gonna be fucking good. So there is just no way they fuck this up. They have everything. The budget, Oda himself, the real source and fund of One Piece approving what goes and what doesn't. There is just no way they fuck this up. <laughs> oh no, that is just... Dog as shit. Oh man, that is rough. Is this gonna be like Death Note? They nerfed him, man. Holy crap, they nerfed him. It looks like that Sea King didn't just take his arm, he took his dignity. Like, especially this part here, like, this is just, it just looks stupid. Don't do this to me. Don't, I, I, don't, I don't want this. He kind of looks like a basement dweller that just turned into a fish person the moment he stepped outside. This looks like you took your dad to a cosplay convention for the first time ever, bro. After the trailer dropped, people were pissed. And I understand where they're coming from, because guess what's wrong with this picture? Arlong is an iconic, threatening, and menacing villain. Tell me you can look at this and not laugh. Arlong is supposed to be this massive, cool, jacked monster. This is more like a pet. This is Arlong when he was a baby. People started making excuses like, well, One Piece characters are weird, you can't translate them into real life. You absolutely can. Look at Avatar, they are blue and weird. Look at Thanos, look at David Jones from Pirate of the Caribbean. It's insane, and that came out in 2006. And if this was just Arlong, imagine what Chopper gonna look like, or Jimbe, or Frankie. Actually, that would be sick. Saying these things out loud makes me sad. But it's not just me, everyone on the internet was disappointed, and people who had hope foolishly got my hopes up for no reason, only to have it worse than Cowboy Bebop lost it. However, there were still a small group of believers, people who believe that if Oda is involved in this, it's gonna be good. And I was one of them. But let's just keep in mind that this is Netflix, okay? They're gonna find a way to fuck this up. Short after the trailer was launched, Netflix started its advertising campaign. The highlights of that were One Piece set sneak peek, the cast of the show hats answering questions about One Piece and throwing spoilers like it's nothing, Inaki meeting Oda, Inaki gifting a customized robotic snail phone to Oda, and my favorite one, this clip. I literally had goosebumps watching this. Then we got the premiere and the drone show, the leaks, more sneak peeks, two other trailers, and finally it was. All right, Netflix, what do you got for me? Holy shit! Right off the bat! Come on, come on, come on! The music! Yes, yes, yes! Oh, oh. Holy shit! Oh. Damn! First, when I decided to watch this, I was faced with a dilemma. The voice actors of the anime are the ones doing the voice acting for the live action dubbed version, and I was uncertain if I should watch the dub or the original. But after watching the first episode, the actors just nailed it. For example, Luffy. When I first saw him in the trailer, I expected his optimism and goofiness to be corny and cheesy in real life. I thought that he just looks like the real Luffy, that's all. But after watching the live action, I realized he is the real Luffy. He perfectly encapsulated that in 
شي وفلوفي هي نيل ذا كوفي مومنت ذا ايموشنال مومنت ذا باداس مومنت ايفريثينغ اباوت هيم از لوفي ايفن ان ريل لايف هي از ذيس ريلي دام نايف ان ات ذا سيم تايم هارت وورمينغ بيرسون ذات يو كانت هيلب بات لاف شينيكو ميتا توكي ني ちょっと笑っちゃったんですよね As for Zoro, the actor Makinyo already had so much experience in live actions. His most noticeable role was in Roro no Kinshin, so he's really good with those sorts. Then we have Sanji, which, to be honest with you, I don't care about Sanji at all. Sanji has always been one of my favorite characters. Not slapping a long nose on Usopp was a wise decision. His face features fit perfectly with how Usopp looks like, but his acting. Zoro, it's me. It's Mary. He's, he's. is lacking a little bit compared to the other actors. He is the only one that I noticed his acting was a bit off. So I hope if there is an upcoming season, he improves on his acting skills because if it's just about looks and personality, he is perfect. As for Nami, I think she's up there next to Luffy when it comes to how good her acting was. Aside from the main characters, the supporting cast was also very good. Bagidi Clown, Mihawk, Gordon Ramsay. As for Arlong, I think although his appearance didn't make him look threatening, but his voice was really deep. He sounds like a villain. Thing that's made up for his looks. And honestly, I love how they gave him that gangster vibe about him. With the chain necklace, the trap beat music that plays whenever he is on the screen. And talking about music, it's phenomenal. You got a beautiful soundtrack by Aurora, one of my favorite singers, with wonderful lyrics that reflect Nami character arc. And you also got this amazing part of the third soundtrack that Netflix has been using in the trailers. The music composer is actually the same composer of The Witcher, if that sounded familiar. And he also kept some iconic melodies from the original One Piece soundtrack. Like this one Or this one Fun facts Each two episodes were handled by a different director So as a result of this, there are different styles Styles that may resonate with some people and ones that may not For me, the first director and the fourth one were the best Because if you go too dark, you don't become One Piece If you go too funny, wacky and goofy, you lose the depth that One Piece has And unlike other fantasy stories, the kind of visual spectacle One Piece presents is very hard to imitate And I think those two directors perfected the balance between dark and goofy So in my opinion, episode 1, 2 7 and 8 had the perfect vibes of One Piece. Overall, I think One Piece live action is not the best series of this year, but it's definitely the best thing that happened this year, and it definitely broke the bad live action curse. I mean, it's already had a great score on Rotten Tomatoes and it's number one series in 84 countries. It's clear that so much love was poured into this. Every set was built. Each episode has a different logo design, a different object on the map. Each person from a different place have a different accent. They put so much thought into the details, and there is only one way to describe how I felt while watching this and that is this beautiful line from the lyrics of the soundtrack I'm coming. if you enjoyed the live action like I did you would definitely consider checking the manga or anime in fact I recently made a video about why One Piece is worth watching you can complement your vision of what One Piece is really about by watching it here